Now, you know, uh, I think we've got room for just a couple more if you'd like to sing in the choir. Amen. You know, we got, how many tears we got in here? Oh, we got enough. Got enough? Okay, yeah. Hey, this morning, you know, Michael mentioned about that terrible war going on. So I felt it kind of appropriate that we talk about us being in God's army. The soldier of the cross. That's what we're going to be speaking on this morning. In Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. 10 to 20. But I stand here before you today as a soldier, as a soldier of the cross. And if you are a child of God today, you as well are a soldier in that God's army. And we're, uh, you know, I want to say this first off. I, if you are a born again Christian, you are a soldier of the cross. Amen. You know, it's really amazing. I remember when I first got to the, where I was going to take boot camp at. I was nervous. I didn't know what to expect. But they made sure that they took care of us. Nobody ran for home because they had guards at the gate. <laughs> they wouldn't let us go. But one of the first things they did was issue us uniforms. Of course, we didn't really know the proper way of wearing one, but they soon corrected us on our mistakes about that. Uh, they were very nice about it. They said, you'll either do it or die. So we did it, just like that. And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning is God supplies our uniform for us. Yeah, he does. And I want to talk about that. But number one, Jack, let's get on with this thing here. Oh, but before we get started into this, i got to tell you something. We're going to start up having the Lord's Supper again. Praise God for that. I found a, a, a source for the, it's a little, the, our, our cup, you know, that we get the, the uh, grape juice in, and then the wafer. It's a one unit, so we don't have to handle it. You know, it's never been touched by human hands, and uh, that's what we're going to use. We'll be we're using them. So it's, it's uh, just, I'm so thrilled about it, because, you know, I really enjoy celebrating the Lord's Supper, and it's been such a while since we've done it. Now, I talked with the folks here, the core group that were here the first thing this morning, and uh, they reminded me that uh, in this church here, it's done usually once a quarter, okay? Well, it's been a couple of years, I think, since we've yeah. done it, hasn't it? Yes, sir. And uh, it just seems so long ago. So we're going to do it next Sunday, can we do it? Yes. Next Sunday, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper. So bring your friends. and hey, I want to say one thing, though, about the Lord's Supper as we do it here. You do not have to be a member of this church to participate in the Lord's Supper. The one requirement you have is to be a Christian. Amen. Be a born-again, gospel-believing, Bible-breeding Christian. And that's what we need in this country today. Amen. Okay. Let me go on here now. Verse 10 to 11, I'm going to read that now. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Let the whole, put on the whole armor of God, and that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That was one of the things that when you went to service, man, I mean, you, you, they give you boots, they give you even the socks to wear, everything, so that you could look like a soldier. So that's what we're talking about here this morning. It looks like you're in God's army. Uh, and, and you know, it's just not what you put on, though, but it's what you act when you get it on. Yeah, yeah. If we tell people, hey, I'm a Christian, can't you see the bumper stickers all over the back of my car? Follow me here, follow me there, you know, follow me to Sunday school, follow me to church. I've got, uh, I wear a, a cross with, with a, a, all kinds of paraphernalia and all kinds of bling, I think is what they call it, all the bling, you know, and I'm just, you just, I wear t-shirts that say, you know, I'm a member of First Baptist Church of Home. I'm going to tell you something. I hope you're acting like one. Yes. <laughs> because a lot of Christians today, they think they're in God's secret army, you know, but there is no secret army. There's no secret agents in God's army. 
we all are declared. But the word finally, and the first word I read there in verse 10, finally, means from now on. It doesn't mean this is the end, that we're coming to the conclusion, finally. No, this means finally, from now on, uh, until the Lord returns, not to be mistaken with a conclusion. But uh, this is spoken to Christians as determined by the word brother. Did you see that? Finally, my brother. And if you're a born-again Christian here today, you are my brothers and my sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and that's, that's something. No matter where you go, and it's Sundays when you go to church or Wednesday nights, or if you go to Bible study, and you can be out of town, you can be across country, you can be somewhere else in the world. They're still your brothers and sisters. That's why we got a lot of brothers and sisters hurting right now in the war zone over there. And they're where they're being shot at and bombed. We need to be in prayer for them, special prayer for them, because of that, what's going on. Well, there's one thing too. I remember in basic, I keep going back to this thinking about this, but I remember in basic training, boy, the one thing was, they're going to get you in shape. Now, I mean, you're doing push-ups, you're doing pull-ups, you're doing running, you're doing all these exercises. Uh, and they can, why? Because they want to build up your strength. But you know, as Christians, our strength comes from the Lord. Our strength comes from the Lord. You don't have to be all buffed up. God will take care of you. The availability of spiritual and moral strength comes from God. It's available. Just got to accept it. But the power of His might, the presence and significance of God's might. Think how, get your head around that a minute. Think about that. He created the world as we stand on it today, or as you said on it today. It's uh, the world. And that doesn't mean just here, though. That means the whole, the, all the universe. He hung all the stars in place. He put the moon so it would come around just at the right exact moment. When I was doing a lot of celestial navigation, you had, you had, uh, I had books where I could go and I could look at exactly the second uh, uh, hour and second, exactly where that moon was going to be, or that sun was going to be over the earth. That's how God made this world. So exact. So exact. He hung the star Polaris. The, what we call the Northern Star. So you can navigate by it. And to all sailors and even the pilots use that to navigate by it. That's how exact he is. It's there. You can count on it. God just is so amazing. Just so amazing. But, you know, there again, you got to accept it. Well, we've got to have the confidence to fight. And that was one thing in basic, boy. Right here, I mean, they, they'd take you, go whip a bushel full of wildcats. You'd take them on and, and come out of there victorious. That's just the way they made you feel. Well, I want to tell you something. God provides us with the armor if we put it on for use. And he has prepared for, uh, use for action. That's what they did in basic. They made us ready for action. That's what soldiers do. Well, he has empowered us to stand, to oppose the enemy, trickery, wiles, and methods, and all the things he tries to trick us with. That's being God's children. That's what God wants for his children. He wants nothing but the best. Nothing but the best. You know, God loves us so much. I just, I can't say that enough. You know, people talk about, God's going to get you. God's going to get you. Well, God's already got me. Amen. He's already got me. I'm his child. He's my heavenly father. And I tell you what, if God be for you, you can be what? Against you. Who can be against you? That's right. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's right, than he that is in the world. Doesn't that kind of give you confidence? Huh? Doesn't that kind of give you say, hey, look, devil, you may try to hurt me, but you get out of here. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, I claim victory over him. Amen. Victory over that devil. Chase him out of here. Because if you stand for him, he will leave you. Stand against him, I mean, he'll, he'll go. 
but only in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, number two, a heavenly battle plan. Now this is something else. When these soldiers get ready, the first thing they do, the, the officers and they all come up with a battle plan. How are we going to uh, obtain this objective that we want to get, obtain? Well, isn't that kind of what we have? Don't we have a battle plan? Uh, I, my memory concerns me right. I think it's kind of like what we call the Great Commission. commission. That's right, the Great Commission. Because that's our orders. That's our marching orders. Go ye therefore into all the world. Not just here in Fountain. But we do need to go in Fountain, by the way. But not just here. Not just Bay County. Not just Florida. Right, the whole world. Go ye therefore into the world, making disciples, teaching them, baptizing them. Oh, I tell you. We've got people that have left home, left security of, of their surroundings, and went into the world. And they're out there now, declaring the love of Jesus Christ. Declaring the gospel to people that need it desperately. I was uh, reading about the one man over there in that war zone, where he <coughs> took his family to safety, and he went back to minister to the people. That's God's people. They need help. They need our prayers for God's intervention there. But, you know, now, now something, we've got the battle plan, you know, in verses 12 to 13, and it says this, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness in this age, and against a spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, Verse 15. Therefore, to, because when it, the, therefore is wherefore, why? Because all this has taken place before. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand. Well, first off though, we, we got all that. We got the battle plan now. But we need to what? We need to identify. We need to be able to identify the enemy. It would be so easy if Satan walked around with a, his red flannel pajamas, with a, you know, his horns and a pitchfork and a fork and tail. We would know, hey, there's Satan. Get away from him. Get out of here, Satan. But they come in there all dressed up, slicked up, and looking good and smiling like he's a used car salesman. I'm telling you what, <coughs> no offense, used car salesman. <coughs> we know we're talking. That's He's just there to trick us. He wants to take away our joy. He wants to take away love from us. He wants to hurt us any way he can. Because that's what he does. He's a liar. And he's a father of lies, the Bible says. That's pretty bad. He's got a bad reputation, doesn't he? Because he earned it. He earned it and he deserves it. Oh, uh, folks. Our, our battle is with some pretty bad folk. And you know what? Now, I remember we were convoying down from Fort Bragg down to Homestead Air Force Base for the Cuban crisis. We stopped at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And then there was these new recruits, raw, raw recruits in there. I mean, they still had the, the, the what we used to call the duffel bag roll in their, in their clothes. They, you know, it hadn't been ironed or stored to starch or nothing. And they were just so, so uh, homesick that the devil could have got in there very easily. Like a new Christian. New Christians. You know, this, when we invite you to come down front here to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's only the first step on a journey. That's not the destination. The destination is heaven. But what we need to do is prepare you for that destination. We need to grow. We need to grow more Christ-like every day. And you know, another thing for for uh, the weapons, when it, I remember the weapon they used to be. I ain't never seen a deer rifle like that in my life. <laughs> it was called an M1. Yeah, I was back in the days. Of, I just missed the brown boot army, we used to call it. We got into the black boot army, and they had to do a bunch of dying because they still had enough brown boots. But it was just amazing 
with how adept you became with that weapon. And I'll tell you right now, Herb was a Marine. And the most dangerous weapon in the world is a Marine and his rifle. Right, Herb? The Marine and his rifle. So that's what we are. We're, we're just ready to take on the evil in this world. We're ready to take on the Satan. But, you know, we're just kind of new at this, really. You know, uh, I, I don't care how many years, you know, it could be 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever years you've been a Christian. Look how long Satan's been working. Look how long he's had to train. And he, look how effective he's been. Look at our world today. Look at all the things, how, what's, you know, it used to be right is right and wrong is wrong. Now it's whatever you say it is. It's become gray areas. No more black and white. No more positive things. No more absolute truth. It's just what you want it to be. That's not God's world. God, Satan is the prince of this world. It says so in the Bible. So we need to make sure that who we follow is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not some make-believe, not some movie star, not some big football player, not some athlete that thinks he's better than anything. You know what, they're playing games for multi-million dollars a year, but we used to play for free in the backyard, playing football, look at them now. And we made them heroes. We made them heroes. We forget about the heroes of the Bible. But, you know, I, I started, let me get back to my train of thought. <laughs> I, I, I'll get there in a minute. <laughs> see, what, see what Carol does when, he, when she stands behind me? She makes me nervous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what? Let me tell you. I told you about the rifle that they issued me. We got a sword we fight with. Yeah, we got a sword. We call it the sword of the Lord. You know what that is? Right here. And, and the Roman soldiers, when they had their sword, they would practice with it, practice with it. And after they put on all their, their protective gear, they would practice with that sword to get very proficient at it. How does a Christian do it? With the sword of the Lord. Read it. Read it. Be faithful in reading the Word of God. That's if you want to fight him. You want to win? I'll tell you what. If you want to know, we win. Go back to the book of Revelations. You'll see what I'm talking about. We win in the end. He's a loser. Satan's a loser, and he knows it. That's why he's fighting so hard to get as many people to follow him as he can. We got people starting up new religions, the new enlightenment of religions. The new Scientology, they're going to tell you all these good things. L. Ron Hubbard started that. He was a used car salesman, by the way. And you know what? He's, he's not very good at that either. But he did. He's got all these movie stars believing in what he's preaching. Well, you know, if it's a movie star saying it's good, then it must be great. It must be great. Well, it's not. It's a lie. That's why we need to identify but we need to account for the armor, for our armor. You know, some people, when God gives us all this armor to put on, they take it, they put it in a closet so it don't get dirty. And they put it in there so it never gets touched, you know. And then when God comes back, they're going to give it to them all nice and shiny. I think God would rather see that scarred up, marked up, and stained, you know, with grass stains. Because why? We need to be in the battle. We need to be in the fight. We need to get off the bench and get in the game. Number three, soldier's preparation. 14 to 17. And it says, stand therefore, having girded yourself, your waist with truth, all right, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having uh, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel, uh, peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, uh, with which you will be uh, able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And then verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which I already showed you that, which is the word of God, and praying. 
I don't want to, I don't want to go on to 18 yet. <coughs> the word stain. This is something that the people here have heard me talk about before, uh, about the Roman soldiers. Uh, they have a, a, well, it looks like, you know, the sandals that you wear to the beach? That's what they would wear, except for this. The soles on there were about three quarters of an inch thick. And on the bottom of those soles were spikes. They had spikes on them. So they could take and, and they could march good and they could advance good, but the only thing is they could stand. And when the enemy would attack them, you couldn't move them because their feet was planted there with their spikes. You know, they were, they were so strong that they, you could, just couldn't move them. That's what we need. We need to be able to stand against the devil, to fight the fight against him. But then we put on, we put on the belt of truth. And I'm talking about the absolute truth, not something that's just gray in an area. And it's worn by the Roman soldier, which is the centerpiece of his armor, because everything else was connected to it. So if he moved or something, the armor wouldn't expose a, a vulnerable spot. He had that armor to protect him. He had the breastplate that he would put on, and he would take it, it was a brass or a bronze, they talked, and strips, and it was over layered. And then it had leather weaved in it. So it was nothing could, the spear or anything could penetrate it. And that gave them great confidence. You know, but we have, we should have the same confidence because of, of what God has done for us. Yes, the belt, the breastplate of righteousness, that's God's standard. And uh, feet shod with the gospel. Uh, and that's, uh, by the way, those feet, uh, those feet, those shoes were called caligate. And it was similar, like I said, to their sandals. The shield of faith, absolute faith in Christ. Absolute faith, not... Oh, maybe God will protect me. I, mean, I don't know for sure. No, believe it. Have faith in Christ. After all, He did die for us. He did die for me. Like I said so many times, there's only two people who will die for you. Jesus and a soldier. There's only two people that will die for you. But the shield is a defensive weapon, you know, to protect you with the shield. And sages were usually had a band of metal around them, so when they strike with a sword, it wouldn't break the shield. Oh, okay, the helmet of salvation protect your thoughts. You know, that's that. You hear that all the time, you know. You shouldn't be thinking them thoughts. Thoughts are hard to control, aren't they? I mean, really, they're really hard to control. And, and, but, you know, something is that we don't need to dwell on bad thoughts. Because that bad thoughts put your feet in motion a lot of times. Going places you shouldn't be going. Folks, I hope you're listening to me out there on the internet and been following along in the Bible. Because we need to realize just how much God loves us and how much He wants for us and how He provided all this stuff for us. Well, let's go with number four here. Uh, a sincere petition, verses 18 and 20. <laughs> I said I would tell you all about how we're going back to 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights and I thought it was so neat the way the youth came in here Wednesday night <laughs> as a congregation they sit down in there and it almost like, we want to talk to you, Pastor. <laughs> and I said, what's the problem? He says, they said, well, he had a spokesman up front here. <laughs> and he said, uh, uh, we'd like to go back to 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights. And I thought that was so neat the way they did it. You know, they were organized. You know, I don't know if Michael did it back there or not. You know, and organizing them. But it was so neat the way they did that. Yeah. I you all you did? <laughs> Jason, you or I may have talked. <laughs> That was good though. I really liked it because they, they were come forward and, and uh, it made sense what they said. It made sense. But they had a petition. Not really, they didn't sign a petition, but they had <laughs> one in their mind to uh, just to let it know that it was hardship on them to get here at six o'clock. And I thought, well, that makes sense. You know, I didn't think about that. The bus ride to, to all the way from Southport and an hour and a half on the bus. You don't get home here late. But I just thought that was so good. I never 
appreciate it. Yeah, and, but it said here in, in, in a verse, didn't I just read this about aggressive prayer? How do we have that? Aggressive prayer. Well, that means don't be wimpy when you're praying. Pray to the Father like it says in there, pray like you've already received it. That's faith too. But just pray, let God know. Father, Father, I need your help. But I think first, like we talked about in Sunday school this morning, was when we need to, first off, when you go to God in prayer, is confess our sins to Him. Confess what's wrong, what we've done wrong. And He said, Pastor, I don't sin. But yeah, He did. He just sinned with a sin of pride. Because we know we all sin. Mm -hmm. We all sin. But God, the Bible, in 1 John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, He will forgive them. He will forgive them. Yes, we need to be aggressive. And not just, uh, I'll pray if I get a chance to. Well, maybe I'll, I got two minutes, uh, maybe I'll pray now or something. Folks, you try that with the loved one here on earth, and don't talk to them for a long time. You will be in trouble, especially your husbands. <laughs> for all the saints, in verse, uh, Paul ends in verse 18 with the supplication of all saints. And not uh, one, uh, only a two, one or two, but all saints, all saints, for boldness of speech. You know, that's something that's Christians, that's kind of hard, isn't it, when you're trying to tell somebody about Jesus, and you just, uh, I want to tell you about Jesus, you know, uh, uh, well, never mind, I can't think of what I need. Hey, listen, be bold, be bold. Do you think Paul would have been, oh, well, I don't, I picture Paul as being up forthright because he knew what he was talking about. He knew what Jesus had done for him. And as Christians, we should know that what Jesus went through for us on that old cross and what he, what he did there and what he went through before he got to the cross, the beatings and everything. Yes, we need to be bold in our speech. We need to be ready. Yes. Well. Do you know for sure, without a doubt, that you're ready for the battle? If your commander and officer, God, said to you today, I want you in the battle. I want you to go to the neighbor next door and tell him about me. I want you to tell him how I love them and how I gave so much for them. I want you to tell him. But you know, I remember we had some evangelists come down when I was uh, down at uh, Homestead in Florida, their First Baptist Homestead, and uh, they had a class on how to witness. And, oh yeah, it gives us the words to say and everything. I want to tell you this. If you're a Christian, a born-again Christian, you have a testimony. But your testimony is different than mine. You know, the way we got saved. It's all. That testimony you have is the greatest witness of what God has done in your life. And I'm not talking about 40 years ago. I'm not talking about when you were first saved and that, that fire was burning bright and how over the years your fire kind of got a little dim. You know, it needs to be stoked again. It needs to have fuel put in it. But I'm talking about maybe last week. We talk about here, Michael. Michael's great for testimonies on Sunday nights. I mean, he'll get, you, get it out of you one way or another. He don't let you go without a testimony. <laughs> and that's what we need to have. We need to have that testimony of how God has stepped in and, and, and took care of my life. And how, he, how he's helped me with my health, you know. Uh, and just his hand was there. He sent me to the right people. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you this for sympathy or nothing. But most of you know anyway, uh, I had bladder cancer. So I went down to Tampa for, for my five, fifth year uh, when they were going to declare me cancer free. Got in the room there, the doctor, Dr. Scott Gilbert, his name is, great man. He says, Brother, Mr. Sharkey, he says, I want to tell you, your bladder is perfect. No cancer anymore. So I was really thrilled about that. But I always hate a sentence that ends with, but. He said, but, you've got a mass in your right lung. And I said, well, what can we do? And he said, it's got to come up. 
That's just it. He said, but it's lucky because it's in that lobe, and we just take the lobe off. That sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? I'm still trying to recover it. It's been a year ago. I still get short of breath and everything. I'm telling you, it's a long road to, to come back. But God had it. He found it because they just happened to, the CT scan they did, just happened to catch that lobe, and they saw the mass. No chemo, no radiation. Done. Gone. Praise God. Praise God. He wants nothing but the best for us. Yes, the devil is no rookie now. Like I told you, you know, he's, he's really no knowledgeable of warfare. So we need to be in prayer. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in prayer for each other. We need to be in prayer for other Christians because we're all in the same battle. We're all in the same war against evil. Bow me, please. Father God, I... I thank you so much, Lord, for, for what you've done for each and every one of us. I'm sure we've all got a testimony, God, how you blessed us, watched over us, cared for us. I thank you, God, for what you've been doing at this church here, Lord, just blessing us all the time, more and more, Lord. Just a joy to see you working. God, I, I want to pray for those people over there in this war, Father. I just pray, God, you would keep them safe and watch over them, Lord. And I pray that Putin would draw his troops back, Lord, and, and stop this killing him. And Lord, it's, it's like a David and Goliath story, only that David is not a very nice person this time. God, I just want to pray for each and every person that's here this morning. I know, Father, that some of us might have, might have illnesses or hurting or whatever. God, maybe they need to come down front for prayer, and we'll pray for them. God, maybe you sent some folks here to join this church and become part of this congregation. Lord, I God, I just pray, Father, that they would do the same and would take care of it for them. God, maybe, maybe, just maybe, there's somebody here that doesn't really know you as Lord and Savior, and they would like to know that. I just pray, Father, that they would come up here, Lord, and, and accept you as their Savior. Father, I praise you for what you're going to do here during this time of invitation. Thank you, my God. Of course, in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, if you are able, would you please start the invitation? <laughs>